But what I'm going to enjoy the most is our next guest. We've got Congresswoman Nan Hayworth. She has incredible news from Washington for you. You know, the only thing I don't uh, care for about Nan Hayworth is the fact that New York has her and Texas doesn't. Nan, welcome to the George Jargacy <laughs> Show. Oh, thank you, George. And boy, that turkey sounds good. I wish I could join you. <laughs> well, no, another time, another time. So you've got big news. I, 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 you know, I got this email from you this afternoon. I read it. I was very excited about it, but I did not tell our listeners about the news. So would you like to share it with our listeners? Well, George, we have certainly uh, been uh, working as, uh, as diligently as we can in the House of Representatives. We passed two bills uh, this week, as you know, to try to provide long-term assurance that we're going to reform our tax code. And so we passed a bill to extend the 01 and 03 structures for now, but they're even they're too complicated, as you know. So we passed the Pathway to Job Creation Act in the House of Representatives. We've sent it over to the Senate, and that is a long-term plan to simplify our tax code, make it flatter, fairer, more workable, and less costly, and grow jobs. Take the burdens off our businesses, small and large, off our employers, and get the economy going. Now, Nan, is, are both those things under H.R. 8, uh, the Protection and Recession Prevention Act of 2012? Uh, the, the, you mean the... Um, uh, the act that was uh, proposed as an alternative to our uh, to our uh, well, plan. Well, I guess what George? let me let me let me back up a little bit. HR eight, uh, the Protection and Recession, yes. pr the Job Protection and Recession Prevention Act. Right. Is that right. the extension of the tax cuts, or is there That's, more in that? Well, it's you know we we passed it. We passed a, a whole the, you know a, a whole fleet of bills this week, all designed to uh, to achieve those goals, George. And okay. you know HR eight is is uh, I think that's that's the, the the big plan to try to get everything because HR eight has got a small digit, which means it's really uh, one of our one of our most important priorities. And it is the general plan that we are going to simplify our tax code, make it more workable. We're going to extend those 01 and 03 uh, tax structures in the meantime so that we can have assurance that people are not going to get slammed by tax Mageddon come January 1st, 2013, and people are very worried about that. It is, uh, it is a break on our economy now. We heard the job figures today. Uh, there's, there is, I mean, it's, it's, it's good news that people are finding employment, but it's very bad news that we're not keeping up at all with what we need to do. We should be creating, as you know, George, 300,000 to 500,000 jobs per month to try to make up for the losses we've had ever since uh, uh, President Obama took office, unfortunately. And, yeah, and I mean, uh, you know, 40, 42 straight months of 8% or more of employment. I mean, that's almost his whole presidency has been uh, – uh, has been an economic failure. You know, the bipartisan thing is what interests me. This the vote on that yes. HR eight was yes. two hundred and fifty six four and one seventy one uh -huh. against. I mean, that right. that's a big uh, big majority there. Yeah, yeah, we we brought we, and you know, George. Most of the time, we bring Democratic colleagues with us. Uh, so we if we get every Republican vote, uh, you know, that's about two hundred and forty one at this point. So to bring along fifteen Democrats is uh, is pretty decent, and it could have been a, a couple more than that, depending on uh, you know some of our Republican colleagues uh, uh, vote a little differently for the rest of us. But uh, you know, for for various reasons. But but it is exciting to get uh, to get that reach across the aisle. That's what we want to do, George. It, it, Speaker Boehner has made it very clear that. He is trying to work with everyone in the House of Representatives and bring everyone in, which is why we allow uh, open discussion and debate on the floor. And we have amendments that are from Democrats and Republicans. You know, this is about everyone. And unfortunately, well, yeah. the president has chosen to be very divisive. You know, I, uh, he is. He, he, I mean, he's the worst president of the United States, in my opinion, we've ever had. Now, here's yeah. the thing I think is interesting, though. I mean, you know, people don't realize just how destructive – uh, this was. I mean, this, and, and I know you know it, but for listeners that don't know what what uh, Congresswoman Hayworth is talking about, this tax of that was coming up on uh, oh. January 1st was going to mostly affect 
two two classes. Lo, people that are the lower income were going to have a fifty percent increase in their taxes, and then the families were going to get just raked over the coals by uh, by not getting exemptions, uh, the marriage exemption, child exemptions. We're all going to go up, yep. and so families and. Right. The lowest income earners were going to take the hardest hit, and that's not yep. the rhetoric and uh, nonsense no, that you right. heard out of the White House. That's right, and you know, and the other, of course, the the the, the problem that we have, especially with the White House's approach and with the Senate Majority's approach, is that the taxpayers on the other side of that scale are the ones who actually provide most of the investments in the new businesses uh, that folks who are trying to start businesses uh, really need to have. So it's it's a lose-lose if we don't provide that relief and assurance. And if we don't look long-term, which, of course, is just what you were talking about at the beginning of this segment, George, that big plan that we have in the House uh, to relieve the long-term complexity and non-productiveness and counterproductiveness of our tax code. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's absolutely a, a mess. But you know what I like? I, I know that uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, congressmen up there and congresswomen up there now uh, and, and some people in the Senate now that aren't there like you. Yeah, you didn't you didn't have to come out to serve. You came out to right. serve your country. I, You know, you didn't come out to be a lifelong politician. You saw something was wrong. You rose to the occasion. You went up to Washington to serve to make a That's difference. Right. And That's right. uh, unfortunately, for way too many years, we've had a lot of professional politicians uh, there. And I, I have a, a lot of hope. Uh, for the next coming years because of people like you uh, in Congress that are there. Because, uh, I mean, let's be frank. I mean, you could be sitting back uh, somewhere else relaxing, uh, spending time with family, other things. It's not like you, right. you, it's, you, know, you didn't need the money. You're a doctor by trade. I mean, you've worked hard all your life. And even then you came out uh, to support your country. But, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I have hope because of that. But one thing that sure. listeners probably don't realize is just how much this affected the, just the regular working people. These tax increases that were that were scheduled for January first, that you guys have fixed here with with uh, House right. Bill House uh, uh, HR eight, yep. uh, th- that was going to raise people's payroll tax uh, by fifty percent. Uh, Four point oh, yeah. two was the with, with, with what was it held? It was going up to six point two. I mean, it's a big increase, right. a fifty oh, percent increase. I mean, absolutely. And, and, but to listen to the White House, you know, the only people you that Congress was going to work for was the wealthy, which couldn't be farther from the truth. It was the low-income right. earners and the families that really got helped uh, today by this H.R. 8. Listen, oh, congratulations. Absolutely. You know, what well, a great you, job George. you guys did. I hope thank that you. the Senate will, will take a lesson from you guys and uh, push this through. I, uh, well, George, and, and that's where, you know, we always say this, but that's where uh, your listeners, great patriots, and they, they've, got, they've, got the right, they've got the right man they're listening to. And I, I appreciate the fact that you uh, have taken your success and chosen to devote time and energy to being a voice for our cause, because, George, we desperately need it. We need public pressure on the Senate. And they're, they're going to get pressure in two different ways, as we all know. Number one, the, the senators who are there now get pressure from their constituents. And there's also the pressure of the November election coming up. Yep. And we need to have thank, every th- senator. Thank you so much, Nan. Our cause. We, we're going to go to break. Thank you so much for the kind words. And thank you for hard work. We appreciate thank this, you, George. George.